It's Coop backstage for Odyssey on our CMA Fest coverage brought to you by Simple Green with Priscilla Block. Hi. How are uh, you? Amazing. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I think we'll start with your outfit because everyone seemed <laughs> to call it out when you came in. And obviously, <laughs> very bright. You like very it? Powerful. I do. I do like it a lot. So tell me what's going on here. What do we got? Um, okay. Well, clearly I am not working on any construction, <laughs> but I figured I'd bring the sunshine today. Um, the safety vest is from like a gas station somewhere. <laughs> we obviously had to rhinestone it out. Sure, absolutely. The shirts from my Shein collection. Um, also rhinestoned it. The shorts are Walmart. The shoes are Steve Madden, but I also duct taped them. So I call them my Dewey Vuittons um, <laughs> or duct tape Louis Vuittons. That is That's genius. Yes. I like that. <laughs> when you're planning out your outfit, like how much of it is planned ahead? How much of it is, you know what I want to do on this day is we're going to go with the bright neon color and then go from there. You know, gosh, I, I, feel like it really just depends on how much time I have to wash my clothes because sure. like the safety vests really it started with me going into a gas station because I had nothing to wear and I saw it hanging on the wall and I was like maybe I could wear that tonight so sometimes it's like just random but now I like I feel like people are expecting for this the fits to, to be it. like good <laughs> so I try to plan it out if I can if I can, if not, there's, there's a Walmart or dollar general, just about anywhere. Swing. Uh, let's talk about you, me and whiskey, which is already top 20. It's making its way up. Yeah, top it's 10, doing, top 10. It's Insane. doing its thing. Um, now the story obviously is that you had met Justin. He was really, really nice. He offered you some advice if you need anything. And then he called and said, I like you so much. I want you to be on this song, which yeah. is, which speaks volumes to him and, and what he believes in you. Yes. Who else in the industry do you think has been really nice to you has gone out of their way to say, Hey, Priscilla, I think you are really, really talented. If you need anything, just call me. Gosh, there's been so many people that have just kind of reached out their hand. I'll never forget. Um, before I signed my record deal and everything was like crazy, like everything was blowing up. I was just didn't even, I don't know. I kind of just felt like so lost. And I remember Carly Pierce messaged me on Instagram and was like, Hey, Priscilla, like I've been through a lot of this shit. And if there's anything that you need, like, here's my number, call yeah. me. And that was really cool. I, cause you know, she's, she could have been like, who's this new girl coming <laughs> up? Like, no, she was like, let me help in any way. That's um, amazing. but gosh, everyone, I mean, I just met Reba That's and she knew who I was. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Well, we like, she like came in and I was like, oh my gosh, am I being punked? And I was like, wow, you're beautiful. And they were like, can Reba like, slide in like can we pause yours and I was like please pause mine I will gladly get out of way anything out of the way Reba. anything for Reba <laughs> and then like as she was done I was like hey oh my gosh I I literally forgot to tell you my name like I'm Priscilla and she was like I know who you are and I was like oh wow like that's it. That's, that's cool it today right yeah that Back was in. yeah I just peaked my life my peak of life was just now so it's only only down from here I guess I want to talk about your songwriting uh you're an incredible songwriter genuinely one of my favorites Aww, I mean that. thank you but what I find really interesting is that you're this really you have this infectious personality of an infectious smile. You're really kind of like the life of the party, but you write a lot of really amazing heartbreak songs, which are some of my favorites. I love a good, sad song. So what I'm wondering is, is like, what happens, right? Because you're like, is it, you're smiling, you're laughing, you're partying, and then you shut the door and you're like, Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'm like the girl that's either laughing or crying. Like there's really not a whole lot of in-betweens. Like I'm either the girl that's like, partying my butt off at the bar or I'm crying to the bartender, just telling her all my life problems. So I think that that kind of just like comes through in my music too. You know, um, there, I, I'm, I'm a feeler and like, I've gone through a lot of heartbreak and I, I write those songs. It's, um, I don't know. So I, I, I guess like even in, in my music too, like there's the songs that will make you laugh, like thick thighs or peaked in right. high school. And then, you know, songs that kind of just break and, you know, like a boy or me part two. It's, it's really cool. And like, even this morning we played at uh riverfront and you know, you have those really hype songs like off the deep end. And then I played me part two and just kind of seeing that shift even with the fans, like is really cool because there was this girl like partying to off the deep end. And then she was like crying to me part two. And she was like, I literally am just now going through a breakup. And I was like, girl, like, aren't we all like, and I just feel like that's life. It's just a bunch of highs and lows. Is that the best part of songwriting for you? When you see something that was really personal to you, something that you went through, you're singing it, you're performing and you catch someone's face and you can see that, man, like that's, they've done it too. Yeah. It's, it's really 
crazy. Um, you know, cause obviously I, I write songs about my life and, um, you know, just hearing everyone's so like, I'll, I read my DMS a lot. There's, you know, some, some are crazy. I'm like, dang, you are really <laughs> bold coming through on my DMS, but like people will send their stories over and it's just, it's so cool. Like I've gotten, I, I met this gymnast and she was telling me how thick thighs like literally saved her life. And she got kicked off the uh, gymnastics team because she didn't we meet the weight requirements and wow. like hearing stories like that. It's just, it makes it all worth it. It makes me want to just keep writing real and raw songs. Cause the fans relate. I'm wondering if you could do a guy version of thick thighs for someone like me who has a body like the Grinch that stole Christmas. I mean, dad bod, skinny legs. Dad bod? I, I, you want to write it right now? Like, I mean, I'm not as smart okay. like you are. So, well, okay, well, now I'm on the spot. We're going to write a song <laughs> called Dad Bod. Honestly, I'm still trying to write Boat Daddy, and I have yet to find somebody to write that song with me. Um, but yeah, the, but the Boat Daddy will have a Dad Bod okay, hat right. on. So, all done. right. Uh, for the guys, you, you manifested CMA Fest, right? I mean, last year you had, you I what I read was that you were doing shows and you had like a CMA Fest logo, and then you'd be like, brought yeah. to you by CMA Fest. Oh yeah, and then it happened, right? So copyright. <laughs> I've been faking it since day one. Yeah, I like fake it till you make it. That's like my motto for life, I guess. But yeah, I was playing that at the bars, and um, I mean, I've lived in Nashville for nine years, so CMA Fest is like everyone's in town. So I would make my CMA Fest flyers and this is my schedule and I'd slap the logo on it. And I was just like, all right, here I am brought to you by CMA Fest brought to you by my, uh, you know, Photoshop. Right. But, you know, being a part of CMA Fest last year for the first time, I got to do Riverfront and Nissan Stadium. And that was really cool. And then just doing Riverfront today was awesome. And it's it's really cool to even just see the growth from last year to this year. I follow you on all the stuff. Um, and I know that you're a gigantic Taylor Swift fan. Uh, I haven't seen you post anything at the Eras Tour yet. Are you going? Do you have plans to go? I, I didn't went. See anything. Did you go? I, well, I went during the Nashville. The crazy show. The, yes. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, it, the downpour torrential. Yeah. The whole thing. Well, we actually flew back from, I think we were in California that morning. Yeah. I was very exhausted, but I made it. I made it to T Swizzle. That's a fan. Yeah. And we broke down on the side of the road that morning at three in the morning, three. And we're like on our way. Cause me and the girls in our group, we're, we're going to Taylor Swift. Yeah. Right. So boys have at it. Stay in California. We'll see you later. <laughs> so we got an early flight took two different cars. We're driving down the road. The car breaks down. We run out of gas. It's oh like, okay, gosh. great. This is amazing. It's three in the morning. We're in the middle of nowhere and there are no Ubers. And we were like, we are getting to Taylor Swift. Like, this is the craziest thing. We've got like 45 minutes of sleep. It's somehow we get an Uber after like God knows how long. And you know, no one would stop on the side of the road for right. us. I mean, I was flagging down every trucker that went by. <laughs> I was about to really do some crazy things. <laughs> Let me just tell you. And then we were so late. We were like, screw the car, leave the car on the side of the road. Like the band guys can come find it and pick it up. So we literally got into an Uber, put the, the key in the back wheel. And we were like, I mean, sprinting through that airport and I made it to Taylor Swift that night. What an amazing story yeah. that is. And then it, you know, was delayed for was three right, hours. Exactly. So I was like, oh, they're great. Could have slept right. in. Got a great story from it. It was amazing. Uh, I'm going to grab my phone for a second and I want, I want to show this to you. And then I want the, the camera to see it as well. I want you to give okay. me the backstory behind this picture. Oh gosh. Here. All right. Okay. Cause she doesn't give any context in this picture when she posts it. It's a very fun so, picture. So, I mean... Is she going off the deep end? <laughs> What's the story behind this? What happened? Um, well, you see, I really love high viz. <laughs> Duh. Sure. Who doesn't? And there were like a couple cocktails had, you know, we were spring breaking it. We were going wild. Sure. Spring break is. Yeah. And we saw a traffic cone and it just made sense. And so I like everyone would think that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we might've like borrowed the traffic cone. <laughs> the traffic cone might be at my house. I don't know. I didn't put it there. No, and not. so we went and got this traffic cone and I was like, holy shit. Like we can use the traffic cone as a bull. And so, yeah, we've got a girl that's, you know, uh, Kara, she's, she's shaking the traffic cone and it was, I mean, ask if I was on there for eight seconds. <laughs> it's looking like 10. So you rode the track and my, yeah, for my guitar seconds. player is like terrified. <laughs> He's like, holy crap, you're going to break our first bus. 
and we're never going to get it back. You got an amazing photo out of it though. And a great, you know, and a great story. It's worth it. Right? Yeah. It anything too. for the gram, right? Absolutely. Anything like, for the gram. We might get arrested, but Whatever. it'd be worth the pick, right? <laughs> <laughs> Priscilla, it's so good to catch up with you. Yes, I you... love your music. Seriously, genuinely. Thank you. Thank you.